Hi, I wanted to record this lesson for oxidation reduction because I have a great number of people absent and I think you might, some of you who were present might want to revisit it because we did have to rush through this a little bit. So, we start with a multiple choice question of the day. What electron transfer happens in the following reaction? There you see you have the permanganate ion. That's not a familiar one to most of you. We don't use it very much in honors chemistry. Permanganate ions react with iron two ions and hydrogen ions that goes to form the manganese two ion and iron three ions and water is formed and what electron transfer happens choice a iron three ions transfer electrons to iron two ions Iron two ions transfer electrons to the permanganate ion. That's choice B. Choice C, the permanganate ion transfers electrons to the iron two ion. And the permanganate ion for choice D transfers electrons to water. Put it on pause, think about it a moment, and I'll talk about it in just a moment. The way to approach this problem about electron transfer is to assign oxidation numbers to everything you see here. A couple of these are really easy. Let's look at iron 2. Well, it told you. Iron 2 has a plus 2 charge, meaning that it's lost 2 electrons. Hydrogen's lost 1 electron. Manganese has lost 2 electrons. Iron 3 uh, has lost 3 electrons. And you can probably pick water apart. You know, as a um, oxygen tends to gain two electrons, so oxygen has a minus two charge in water, and their hydrogen tends to lose one, but I have two of them for an overall plus two charge, so that gives me my neutral water as zero, so my hydrogen is a plus one, my oxygen's a minus two. Now, let's pick apart permanganate. If we take what we said about oxygen again, that oxygen gains two electrons, and I have four of them, that gives me an overall negative 8 charge. The permanganate ion has an overall charge of negative 1. So manganese must have the charge of what plus negative 8 to equal negative 1. So of course that would be 7. The question asks what electron transfer happens in the following reaction. You're taking electrons from the first and delivering it to the second. So here, manganese goes from plus 7 to a plus 2. Iron 2 becomes iron 3. And hydrogen stays at 1, and oxygen stays at 2. So I can't include anything with the water because there's no change in oxidation state for anything there. So I've eliminated choice D. Iron 2 transferring electron, iron 3 transferring electrons to iron 2, it doesn't happen. It happens the other way around. Iron 2 becomes iron 3 by getting rid of an additional electron. So I've eliminated choice A and identified that iron 2 is going to lose another electron, making it look like my choice should be B. Is it true that it's going to deliver an electron to the permanganate ion? Manganese was once a plus 7, but it is reduced to a plus 2. It gained 5 electrons, so my answer choice is choice B. So, the man manganese in the permanganate ion is reduced from plus 7 to plus 3 and becomes the manganese 2 ion. We can write that as a half reaction, focusing on that reduction. This says that the manganese to, uh, I'm sorry, the permanganate ion gains five electrons to become manganese two. Well, what about this hydrogen I've stuck in there? What about the hydrogen that was stuck in there? There were three reactants in my net ionic equation. And the hydrogen is supplied by, from some acid somewhere. We put a few drops of acid in the reaction or something. And the hydrogen is there 
to pick up the oxygen from the permanganate ion and form the water molecule. <clears throat> to balance it out, since the permanganate ion had two oxygens it was donated, I needed four total hydrogens. Reduction is gain, the gain of electrons. Oxidation is the loss. When I lose electrons, that's oxidation. And iron 2 becomes iron 3 by liberating an extra electron. Now I have three unbalanced protons with the count of electrons. So my five come from five different iron oxidations. So that's where the five electrons came from. So that's how I support. Just in case you don't remember from an earlier class, when you lose electrons, that's oxidation. When you gain electrons, it's reductions. When you gain electrons, you have them plussed in as a reactant. When you lose an electron, you can't minus it out because there is no minusing in a chemical equation. You can only show it as a new product. What we just did is called writing half reactions or oxidation and reduction half reactions. We need to do that in order to balance for charge in the electron transfer. So we're no longer just balancing for mass or for counts. We are now balancing for charge. Trying another reaction, cadmium metal is placed in a solution of 10 chloride. Cadmium metal, that indicates that it has a zero oxidation state because it is the neutral element, it's the neutral metal. And 10 to chloride in aqueous solution, it's told. And you know from your solubility rules that most tin, um, most halide um, salts are soluble, goes to form in what we used to know as a single displacement reaction in this electron reduction exchange. Um, it goes to liberate tin as the free metal and form cadmium chloride, which again, as a chloride anion, is an aqueous solution. So our chlorine is basically our spectator here, and our net ionic equation is cadmium plus 10. And 10 is going to gain electrons as it goes from being a plus 2 to a 0 form. So now let me write my half reactions. Two electrons to go form 10. My oxidation is my cadmium becoming the cadmium 2 ion by freeing two electrons. If I combine those as half reactions, I create that net ionic equation, neutral 10. And just as we look for spectator ions from a salt, we also now have hello, electrons appearing as if they were spectators redundant on both sides. So we can remove them out to give our net ionic equation. Now it's your time to try it. Put it on pause and give it a try on your paper. Copper a negative. Silver can become more negative by going from the plus form ion to the neutral metal of zero. My oxidation is where I free up electrons. Oxidation is loss of electrons and I show those on the product side. And this is known as the full reduction, um, a complete reduction. It goes to the lowest oxidation state. Now you see, I have freed up two electrons, but I only have need of one. How do I handle that situation? I'm going to multiply the entire reduction by two. And this is called balancing by half reaction method. And when I put those together, multiplying that all out, two silver ions, we need two electrons, along with metallic copper to form two silver metals and atoms and copper two ions and the two electrons that were freed up. Now you see that my two electrons balance on both sides and I know that I have two Ag ions plus one copper give me two silver atoms and one copper two ion. Assigning oxidation numbers, some simple rules will help you, and I'll go through this kind of quickly. Follow them in order. First of all, if you have an atom, its oxidation number is zero. It's for also for the diatomic elements. Any element, copper, zero. Nitrogen gas, zero. Hydrogen gas, 
zero. Uh, zinc, c zero. When you have an ion, like chloride ions or zinc ions, then it's the charge on that particular ion. Chloride would be a negative one. Zinc would be a plus two. Sodium would be a plus one if it's in the ion form. Now, I'm careless. Yeah, you know. Technically, you're supposed to put the count first and the charge after. Technically, we should say that the sodium ion is one plus, not plus one. Technically, we should say that the chloride ion is one negative, or zinc is two positive, instead of positive two. The sum of the oxidation number, step number three, in a compound is going to be zero, because it's a neutral element. So, I have hydrogen. There's two of them. Each one's a plus one. I have one oxygen. It's a minus two. Positive one and positive one and negative two is zero. That's what we mean by in a compound. Step number four, the oxidation number of hydrogen, when it's in a compound, is going to be plus one, except when the hydrogen acts as a hydride. And you know the IDE ending means an anion. So that means when hydrogen bonds with an alkali metal, and only alkali metals like sodium and potassium, it will be like LiH. You see H at the end. You see it's the anion in the sequence. So it would be a minus one instead. The oxidation number of Oxygen is always going to be two negative, except in these things called peroxides, like sodium peroxide and hydrogen peroxide, the stuff in the brown bottle that most of you know about, it is going to be a negative one. And as most of you know, it's not stable being a negative one, and it easily decomposes to go back and be negative two. The other time oxygen can be something else is with fluorine. You're not going to encounter those. Only rarely will you encounter those. And in that case, it's going to be a positive two. The sixth one is that the sum of the oxidation numbers in a polyatomic ion has to come out to be the charge of the polyatomic ion. So, for example, let's look at the sulfate ion. We know that oxygen, previous rule, is almost always going to be negative 2. And I have four of them. So, two, negative 2 times 4 gives me negative 8. And the charge on sulfite is negative 2. What plus negative 8 equals negative 2? Well, that would be positive 6. So, the oxidation state in sulfur is going to be positive 6. This is the tip and trick that you're going to use a lot. We've already seen that we're going to talk about the neutral elements. We're going to talk about oxygen and hydrogen. And then we're going to figure out the rest by using the charge on an ion or the charge on a compound. There you go. Put this on pause. Work on these. Discern the oxidation number for each of them. And then I'll put the answers back. Now, put it on pause again and check your work. I'll make a second one for the remainder of the lesson. Thanks for watching. Bye.